Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Here we will be solving the Codility Frog River 1 lesson. And we will present the solutions in both languages, C++ and Python. Make sure to stick to the end because for this problem I will share with you two different efficient algorithms. So let's start by describing the problem. In brief, you have a frog that needs to jump to the other side of a river. But at the same time, we need to have floating leaves in all the positions between the frog and the destination side so the frog can cross while jumping on these leaves and we are given an array as an example where the index represents the time in seconds at which one leaf falls at a certain position and the position itself is provided by the value of the array here for example at uh, zero seconds, a leaf will fall into position one. And then at uh, one second, a leaf will fall into position number three, and so on, until all the positions between the, uh, the two sides are probably filled with, uh, with some leaves. So the array provides the positions that are filled with leaves at each second. And as you can see here, at zero seconds and at two seconds, two leaves are falling in one same position, which is the position number one. So we will have two leaves at the same position, and this doesn't really cause uh, any additional issues regarding our solution. And the goal is mainly to find the earliest time when the frog can jump to the other side of the river. And for this to happen, obviously we need to have leaves in all the positions uh, separating the frog from its destination. In other words, we have to find the earliest time where all the positions are filled with leaves. And just in case we conclude that there is a missing leaf at some position, our function should return minus one, which means that it is impossible for the frog to cross to the other side. So this basically is uh, what is described on the Codility website regarding the problem. Now let's go and see how to solve this according to the brute solution. And then we will see also two more efficient uh, solutions. So we can start by thinking with a brute solution where for each second we can check if all the positions are filled with leaves. But this would mean that for each uh, second we have to check all the elements of the array and confirm if all the numbers between the frog's position and the river side are filled. Although this is the easiest way to start thinking about the solution, it's not the most efficient. As you might have guessed, it involves reading the array more than a few times, and this will affect the efficiency of our program in a bad way. Now let's think of a way that would solve the efficiency issue. First, let's have a look at our array that is provided as an input. These are the elements that are provided in the example. And at each second, we are filling one leaf position. So the first seconds, we are filling position number one twice. Then the third second, we are filling position number two. Then the fourth uh, second, we are filling position number five. Then position number three. Then position number four. And all our positions are now filled with leaves. And if we continue reading the array, we might stack more than one leaf at each position. But that is not a problem for us right now. In order to guess the earliest time where all the positions were filled, it would be easier to have the information sorted in a different way, where the index represents the position of the leaf and the value represents the time at which this leaf fell into this position. And to do this, we can start by checking all the values in array A. And for each value taken as an index, we store the earliest time that this value occurred in the array A. For example, here position number one was filled at zero seconds, and we will store this zero second value as a first element or first leave. Then the second element here of array A is also equal to one, and it was filled at the first second, at one second. This is a leave that will be filling the same position number one. However, we already have one that fell at zero seconds, so we're not going to add any modification for this element. Then position number two was filled after two seconds. And for this position, I'm going to write two seconds here. Then position number three was filled uh, after four seconds. Position number five at three seconds. Let's call this array B. Notice that B has less elements than 
A because each position was considered only once, so all the repeated values of A were not taken into account. We should pay attention for two issues here. First one is that since the elements in array A start with the number one, these values should be decremented by one so they can fit as indexes for uh, array B. So we can start at zero uh, index. And this is what we will be considering when we'll be coding this in C++ and in Python. The second issue is the case where some positions were never filled with any leave. So for this, the solution should return minus one because you will always have one missing uh, leave at some point on the road. So all the initial values of B will be equal to minus one before we start filling uh, the values in array B. So at this stage, our solution is almost finished. Now we just have to run through the array B and check for two conditions. First, if any of the elements is equal to minus one, in which case we will return minus one as an answer, because this would mean that there is an empty position where the frog could not jump over. And the second is to find the maximum value contained in B, because this would be the latest time at which all the positions would be filled. And in this case, if the function didn't return minus one already, by the end of our looping through the array B, we will return the maximum value that we found, which in this example is the number five. There is another turnaround how we can also achieve an efficient algorithm. And we will start by defining another vector B with zero elements. And the size of the vector should be equal to the distance between the frog and the other side of the river. And this distance is provided by the problem. Uh, it is the value of x, which is one of the parameters of our function. Then I'm going to decrement all the values of a by one so that they could fit as an index uh, to the array b. And I'm going to run through all the elements of array a, checking if every time the uh, element b a i minus one meaning all the elements which index is given here by those red uh, values is equal to zero. If it is the case, it means that this is the first time we see a leaf falling at this certain position. And so we are going to change this element to one, which means that there is at least one leaf at this specific position. Then we proceed by checking all the values here. For example, the first two elements, in A, we result in modifying the first element of B. Then the third element will be modifying the uh, second element of B. Then we have the fourth element will be modifying this element here. You will have one and so on until we reach the end of uh, the array A. And once we finished reading all the values, we will check the sum of what we have stored in vector B. And if this sum is equal to the distance between the frog and the other side of the river. In other words, if this sum is equal to the value x that is provided by the problem, which is one of the inputs of our function, it means that all the positions are already filled with leaves and the frog can already jump to the other side. So every time we are reading an element of array A, uh, we are going to do this test uh, to check whether to change a value in vector b and then we are going to proceed with another test if the current sum of the elements of b is already equal to the distance x because in this case we don't have to continue reading the elements we already know that the uh, leaves are already filling the way between the frog and the other side of the river and this is the earliest time this distance is filled so we can simply return the time or the index that we are at however if we finish reading all the array a and we found uh, no solution meaning the sum is not equal to x yet this means that there is something not going on which is probably one missing leave or one missing position. And in this case, our function should return minus one. So basically, that's it. This is our second efficient algorithm. You may prefer one or another, depending on how you see things. Now we're going to see how we can write these ideas in C++ and then in Python. OK, so this is our solution in C++. We can start by uh, checking our function. It takes two parameters, the x, which is the distance between the frog and the other side of the river, and the vector a containing the uh, leaves positions and the time at which those positions were filled. So as we said in the algorithm section, we have to start by defining another vector of integers, the vector b. 
that is of the same length of the distance x between the frog and the other side and it's filled initially by minus one and for each uh, value of a for each element of a I'm going to check if the element ai the position ai is less or equal than x I don't want to go beyond the uh, reverse side distance because this is useless I'm just interested in the distance that is separating the frog from the other side of the river so it should always be less or equal than x then I have another condition which is the b a i minus one it means that I have never added any leave at this position so in this case it should be equal to minus one so for each element of a if these conditions are true then I'm going to change the element b a i minus one the position at which I'm at will be equal to i then if these conditions are true here I will have to modify the element b a i minus one which is the position that I am looking at in this iteration and this element will be equal to the index i then I'm going to define uh, a variable called max initialized at zero because this will be holding my maximum value it's a very bad name because max is usually a name of a function that is also provided by the standard library of C++ so just avoid it if you can and for every element of b I'm going to check if bi is equal to minus one first which means that there is no leave at a certain position and if I find a gap if I find any element bi that is equal to minus one I'm going to return immediately minus one because in this case the frog cannot cross to the other side of the river now if it's not the case I can check uh, the other condition which is if the maximum value is less than what is already in bi then my maximum my new maximum value is equal to the value of bi I could write this differently I could have wrote it this way m is equal to the maximum value between the current m the current maximum and bi but in this case I have to change uh, the name of my maximum value it will be equal to m and this is why uh, I already said that it's a bad name to name it max because it's a name of a function that's already provided by C++ because so I'm going to keep it uh, the way we started with for now okay I'm going to put this to max and there we go if I finish looping through the whole uh, array b and I don't find any gaps and I'm looking for the maximum value then at the end I'm going to return the maximum value that I found which is uh, the timing of the last polling leave now the same algorithm in Python is not much of a difference we have our solution function then the x parameter and the a array uh, it's a list actually in Python then I'm going to create a new list initialized with minus one values with length x and for i in range between zero and the length of a so I'm going to iterate over all the elements of a if a i is less or equal to x and b a i minus one is equal to minus one which are the two conditions we've used already in C++ then in this case the element b a i minus one will be equal to i then here I defined uh, a new variable which will hold the maximum value m equal to zero at start and then I'm going to loop over all the elements of uh, array b and if any of these elements is equal to minus one which means I have a gap with no leave I'm going to return minus one because the frog cannot cross to the other side of the river and otherwise I'm going to just look for the maximum value of bi of the array b when I finish iterating over my array b I will return the maximum value that I found which will be the earliest time where all the leaves fell in place now if you are interested in the second solution the second efficient algorithm this is the way we can write this in C++ you have uh, first we have the solution function which is already provided by the problem then we're going to define our new vector b but this time it's going to be um, with a size x but filled with zeros initially and then I'm going to define the sum uh, equal to zero it's just an integer variable and I will be looping over all the array a I'm going to check all the elements of array a and if the element b a i minus one 
is equal to zero, meaning I've never visited this element, I've never put a leaf at this uh, specific position, and at the same time, if this position is uh, less or equal than x, which is the distance between the frog and the other side of the river, in this case, I'm gonna increment the sum by one, which is the number of leaves that I already saw falling uh, between the two sides of the river, and I'm gonna change the value of BAI minus one to one, that there is already a leaf at this position. Inside of this iteration, I'm gonna check every time if the sum is equal to x, because if it is the case, it means that all the positions between the frog and the other side of the river are already filled, and I can already return the index i. If I continue looping over all the elements of the array a, and I haven't found any index where the sum is equal to x, it means that there is a gap at some position that will not be filled, that was not filled, and in this case I could return minus 1, which means that the frog cannot cross to the other side of the river. And of course we can write the same uh, solution in Python. It would look uh, this way, so we have our function, the x value, the a list, then I'm going to define a new list initialized with zero values with length x and a new variable s equals zero to just calculate the sum of, uh, of the leaves. And for i in range from zero to length of a, meaning I will be iterating over all the elements of a, I'm going to check if b a i minus one is equal to zero, meaning there is no leaves yet at this position. And if this position is uh, less or equal than x, I'm going to increment uh, the sum by 1. And I'm going to mark this position as containing already a leaf. And inside this for loop, I'm going to check if the sum is equal to the distance, because if the sum of the fallen leaves uh, is already equal to the distance between the frog and the other side of the river, it means that the frog can already cross, and this is the earliest time the frog can cross to the other side. And this is how our return i, the index, or the time at this uh, position. If I continue looping and I finish all the elements of array a, without finding any element for which this condition is true, it means that there is a gap at uh, some point, and then I could return minus one, which means that the frog cannot pass to the other side of the river. And that's it, basically. I think uh, it's always satisfying to see this 100% ring at the end. I hope you guys found the information helpful. If you are still following, it means you are very patient. And in these matters, patience is key. Good luck to you. Keep up the good work and see you next time.